A very important point for you to remember when using binoculars on the night sky, do not look at the moon. The Kitt Peak National Observatory Visitor Center is a nonprofit through its parent organization, Aura, the Association of Universities for Research in Astronomy. Hello, I'm Brian Robinson. I'm a public program presenter at the Kitt Peak National Observatory's Visitor Center. My moon morning is largely facetious, but a little bit not. And I want to tell you more about what that morning is about when we get into how to tune these up in the backyard. Um, I want to give you some tips about how to use binoculars as a lot of people that visit our programs don't have really a wealth of experience with binoculars and certainly not at nighttime. So there are some features that are inherent to basically all binoculars that don't get used that will really maximize uh, your experience. Uh, firstly, the eye cups, these rubberized cups around the eyepieces themselves. They're kind of configured for whether or not you're wearing glasses. If you're going to be wearing glasses, you want to roll these down and kind of out of the way so you can get a little closer uh, to the eyepiece itself. If you're not wearing glasses, you put them back up and then they'll supply the right amount of eye relief from the eyepiece itself, the right distance for you. Something to keep in mind though is that the binoculars can dial in a custom prescription for you. So you may want to experiment with using your glasses and not using your glasses and seeing how these may be able to accommodate. So that's kind of the big trick is these tune up to your unique vision more so than most people realize. It might be in the manual that came in the box. It might be on a PDF on a line somewhere, but not the kind of thing that people usually pour through. And we find that a uh, majority of our visitors uh, don't know that these are these barrels, these lenses, one for each eye, are separately adjustable. Um, so, okay, now we're outside, pretend, and we're gonna tune these up. First of all, first of all, don't look at the moon, okay? Don't start by looking at the moon. That's what that whole thing's about, because it's too bright to start off with. Nighttime vision, uh, you, you have to adapt to the low levels of light that is inherent to the night. So that means you're getting a chemical build up in your eyeball called um, rhodopsin, and this is allowing the rod nerve cells of your retina to basically transduce lower levels of light through uh, the nervous system, send that message to the brain, and it takes 20, 30 minutes or more for that to really swell up and start doing its job. So if you've started to get your night vision acclimation, the last thing you want to do is boom, right up to the brightest thing in the night sky, typically, unless there's a crazy comet or supernova, but the supernova of that brightness hasn't happened for about a thousand years. I've digressed. They've got me on a timer for good reason. Um, what you'll want to do now is pick a star, not the moon. Pick a star in the sky and something maybe not super high up toward the zenith straight ahead because you'll be at this for a bit. Uh, and you don't want to necessarily start the evening by you know, wrenching your back or something of that nature. So pick a star at a reasonable altitude and you're going to tune each of these lenses one at a time. That's the key because that can be done. Most people just use a center barrel and think that's the only adjusting parameter and it is not. That is specific to the left eye. So easiest thing to do as opposed to squinting and then getting started, cover the right lens all together so you can keep a comfortable position with your face essentially. Uh, look through the left eyepiece at that star and roll this center dial till you get a very very sharp pinpoint spot and that star really resolves as nice and crisp. Then you're going to reverse the process and leave this alone because your left barrel is already tuned and you're gonna use this right eyepiece. It's got a plus or minus deal here to fine tune an exact prescription for your right eye. So the same thing applies, it's just a different mechanism on the binoculars itself. Look up at that spot, that star that you've chosen and dial this in to get it really, really sharp. Now we're cooking with gas. The last thing to do 
is you see the way these fold back and forth? The last thing to do is just set the right distance for how far apart your eyes are so you're not getting that kind of weird, obscure double vision thing. So that's the last step, and then you're ready to go. Uh, that makes a tremendous difference. And again, the separate manipulability of each lens is something that uh, is news to definitely a majority, perhaps even a high majority of our visitors in nightly observing programs up here at Kitt Peak. So uh, try that. And next time, if you've got a set of binoculars uh, at home, uh, dial them in like that for your astronomy viewing and, and you could be quite surprised. We've got more information for you. They have got me on a timer for good reason. Our education director, Carmen, has written a blog with more information about how to select binoculars, why aperture size matters, and some more tips to get the most out of them. Uh, we put a link to that, uh, visit kitpeak.org. We put a link to that blog specifically. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's right in the description. And if you're on Facebook, uh, we put it in the comment thread right below uh, the posting of this video. So please check that out. And we'd love to see you up at the mountain sometime and the dark, dark, beautiful skies of the legendary Kitt Peak and the National Observatory. Thanks for seeing the video. The Kitt Peak Visitor Center brings the science of astronomy to the public through exhibits, daytime tours, and nighttime observing programs. This mission is funded solely by your patronage and generous donations, and we thank you for your continued support. See us online at visitkittpeak.org. The National Observatory is located southwest of Tucson on land of the Tohono A'atham Nation.